Well, I was born down in the Southland Twenty some odd years ago I ran away for the first time When I was only four years old I'm a freeborn man Born for homeless on my back I know every inch of the highway Every foot of back road Every foot of railroad track Well it is an absolute beautiful morning here In West Tennessee I uh, just got back from deer hunting Didn't see a lot of deer I saw a few doe last night. Uh, we've had so much rain here this year, it hasn't been really uh, good hunting conditions. Uh, really a total washout for a while, but under flash flood warnings and whatnot. But I did find on the way out a good piece of cedar that uh, it was actually a limb that had been broken off by another uh, tree limb. I don't know if it just was dead or lightning struck it or what, but this piece of cedar, I think is gonna make some good hearthboard material. I'm really kind of anxious to see what it's going to do with the hand drill. Uh, I think the poplar was a little hard for, uh, for doing that, but who knows, maybe I'll get out here in a few minutes, uh, whack me off a piece of this, see what the uh, goldenrod spindle will do on it. And if, if I do get a chance to do that, I'll be sure to share it. It's early in the morning. Again, I'm waiting on the dew to get off the grass where I can go mow. But I have got uh, my sticks, small twigs that I have found that have been up off the ground on some dead limbs here under the tree. I have found, uh, I took some of the twigs off of the cedar that I brought home this morning that was good and dry. I have some uh, poplar bark in my haversack that is good and dry, and I'm gonna show you how I processed that down. It's not a big secret, but I just I felt like I left that out of the first video. So uh, I'll show you what all I've got here. I've got an old piece of plywood laid out here. This is the dry spot I could find. And we're gonna try a piece of this um, cedar with the goldenrod and see what that does. Okay, so here's what I've got. Uh, here's the small twigs that I found that were dry and I've got my bigger stuff over here. Um, actually, that's part of some uh, tulip poplar that I had brought home and laid on the driveway to kind of dry out. Um, it was pretty dry, cracked. Uh, snapped in two really easy um i've got my my goldenrod spindle here that i had on the last video uh this is the piece of tulip poplar that i used to start the fire this little piece right here is one of the smaller limbs that i broke off of the uh, cedar tree and it's about the same size as the hearth board that i used off of the poplar tree i'm going to process it down uh, make us a hearth board and uh, we're going to see if we can get a fire started out here all right, this is where I'm gonna make my, my hearth board out of this piece of cedar. Um, I'm just gonna probably whack it off somewhere in here with my saw, and uh, then we'll try to uh, baton this thing down and get us a good thickness on it where, uh, where we can make us a, a decent hearth board. So let's see what we can do with this. Let's see if we can't get this stick cut. Leave that open for my notch when I get my initial burn in done. I think I'm also gonna cut that little part off. Oh, I love the smell of cedar. All right. See if we can baton that piece down now. Got a piece of firewood here. Try to keep it up off that damp ground. Not sure how this is going to split, but we'll see. Again, I'm going to try to save all that I can. It did fairly well. Get it down a little flatter. All right. Get that thing. 
thing about three eighths of an inch thick or so. Maybe a little less. Let's see how this other side of the guitar. Not too bad. A little thicker on one side than the other. But I think we can deal with it. So here's what I've got so far. And again, it's probably a tad bit smaller than the hearth board that I used that was tulip poplar. But I don't know. We'll see how it does. I'm going to take my time to get a good divot started. I'm going to take my spindle and because this is kind of pithy, the center of it is a little bit, uh, has a dimple in it. So I'm going to get all of that down where I can start off with a new edge on it. So when that center does start to generate some dust and itself break down. I've still got a lot of area making contact if that makes sense. Okay, I can tell I need to get a little bit deeper. that's going to be good. So let me see what I can do. Burn this thing in. I think this is going to be good. Just that little bit, I'm already getting some smoke, believe it or not. This is called the floating method. If you do your hands up on the out stroke and you put the right pressure on it, you can, uh, you don't have to walk down like this while you're burning in that hearth board. I like that. All right, so now I need to uh, to put my notch in it. I'm gonna take this little saw off my Leatherman, and I'm gonna saw straight in. You want about an eighth of a pie where that dust can pile up on whatever you're catching it on, and uh, see what we can do do from there. Let me get this saw. I could do it with my knife, but it's so much easier just to take a good saw, especially a small blade like this, and just cut to where you want it. And uh, then take your knife and angle it. Maybe you can. All right, let's notch this thing. Secret to your notch is getting it where that dust that collects can get plenty of oxygen. If you just sit there and you spun in that one spot like we were, all you're going to do is push your dust out around it and it can't collect together and build up that ember. And that is the purpose of this notch. Now the poplar bark. I want to get a good close up of this if I can. This outer bark here that you see that flakes off, you still want to save as much of that as you can to use. But all you're going to do is take that poplar bark and just kind of 
wiggle it back and forth in your hands and you'll see these fine fibers. That is the inner bark that makes such a good tender bundle that you wanna, wanna process down. And it's just that simple. I mean, you gotta, you gotta catch your bark at the right time. Uh, if it's too green, this doesn't happen as quickly. But if it's uh, something that's been on the ground for a little bit, uh, and like I say, this is some that uh, the other day when I got down out of the deer stand, I found a land, uh, actually it was a dead limb that was in a tree that had fallen out of the little poplar tree that my stand was in. And uh, I thought, hey, I'm gonna carry that home. That'll make some good bird nest material. So you just keep working it back and forth until you get that old fibrous looking stuff. And uh, that works really good once you get it down. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna process down a few more and then we'll come back to the video. Okay, so I was able to find some more dry material for my bird's nest. This is just some dead grass. And I found some of the goldenrod has already started to die from the ground up and its leaves were really dry. So I've got those. I'm gonna put my tulip poplar that I processed down in here. Hopefully that'll be enough that I can get a fire going and uh, use some of these dried twigs and limbs to keep it sustained. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> Got plenty of time after you get that ember. Catch your breath. Yep.
warm fire can do wonders for you. Like I said, we just got back off vacation. We went to Pigeon Forge it's around Gatlinburg. Beautiful this time of year up there. Of course, the colors haven't started changing a lot. But an interesting story about our trip. There was a lady that uh, got lost up around Clemens Dome. And it's sad she was uh, she was less than three quarters of a mile away from the trail. And uh, I don't know what the final verdict is on how the lady passed away. Uh, my thoughts and prayers are with her family nonetheless. But she didn't make it. It was down to 40 degrees. A couple of nights she was missing. She uh, had to brave rain, fog. And I'm sure when that day started out, she didn't have a clue and didn't even uh, cross her mind that she would be in a survival situation before the day was over and I guess the main thing I want everybody to take away from that is you don't ever know you don't ever know when the time is going to happen God forbid hopefully it never happens but I don't think there's anything wrong in being prepared and learning the skills that it takes to survive of which I know very few of, I admit. But I think about that lady and other people like her. And I think to myself, if that had been me, what, what would have happened? How would I have dealt with that? And I'd like to think at least I have a few ideas You know, I, we were hiking some trails ourselves, and uh, I carried with us the entire time uh, a means to start a fire, a uh, means of shelter, a uh, means to purify water. And that's the three main things you've got to have, fire, shelter, and water. And I just wonder if that, if that lady had had that, you know, if she had had a warm fire to encourage her. And I'm gonna tell you what, it, it can do as much, I believe, as someone being with you to encourage you. Just having that fire there and knowing I can stay warm, it's gonna keep a lot of the animals away. And as long as I keep it fed, it's gonna be here with me. But there's got to be a plan to getting that fire. There's got to be a means of securing what you need to build a fire. There's got to be a knowledge in your head of knowing where to look. And that's the main thing I like to focus on. The main thing everybody should focus on. If you don't know what to do in a situation like that, then you have no way of... of uh, of reaching into your brain, into the treasure chest of knowledge that each of us carry to some extent to survive. So that's it. Friction fire with a hand drill. I showed you on tulip poplar. I showed you on my little piece of cedar that I took off of a limb. It wasn't even the main trunk I've still got it laying on the driveway drying out a little bit more but uh, the main thing is not having to get to this point you know the main thing is having a a big lighter with you my gosh it's simple stick one in your pocket tote you a some kind of tender if it isn't nothing but a little piece of jute rope uh, 
just have a plan of, uh, in your mind as to what you're going to do in case you find yourself in that same situation. A lot of people would think what I do in learning to do all this stuff is stupid. I don't think it's stupid at all. I mean, my, my goodness, God gave us a brain. A brain that we use a very small percentage of half the time. All we got to do is fill it full of stuff and knowledge to survive. I urge you to do that, to dig into what it takes to survive, not only here on this beautiful earth that God has given us, and the life He's given us to live but the life to come as well. This is Jeff, Mill Creek Bushcraft. I'll see you next time. Well, I was born down in the Southland 20 some odd years ago For the first time